Well, we're back with another Argo episode, and this one has been filmed out of sequence, so there'll be some stuff here you'll recognize later on. But this is probably also going to be a relatively short episode, because this is a fairly simple mod that I'm doing. Uh, so uh, we'll pack this out a little bit by explaining why we're doing what we're doing. Now this, you'll notice, is not a stock mod. This, um, I think I detailed in a previous video, the episode number of which I can't remember. I'll look it up and I'll see if I can put a link in the description down here. But this is an aluminium transom mount that's designed to fit into the tow hitch receiver here with a pin, which makes it removable. It does impinge slightly on my angle of departure, but um, that's not hugely the end of the world. Um, crucially, I have my outboard mounted on this and um, I can pull that up to a reasonable angle. At this particular angle, if I uh, try and exit the water, it often drags through the sand. Now, there is a problem with this. I have all the weight is pushed up to the top here. So this little receiver tends to try and push forwards. I then have all the flex in this bar down here. Um, you know, I mean, that tube is made to deal with that. But with the physics of things, I'm pushing up here and I'm pushing down here. And I've got a lot of bits and pieces. Hold up a minute. I had to clip a section out while the bloke with the big V8 diesel come past, the turbo diesel. It's pretty noisy. In any case, I'll have a chat to him one day and uh, see if we can convince him to go a little light around the corner. Anyway, that's not the uh, point we're discussing here. So, the problem I've got is physics is pushing all the force up here on the top of this, which is forcing it all down there, and we're putting stress points at each of these hinges. I propose to make a little packer between these two, possibly out of something soft that won't erode away at everything. That way all the force is then laterally straight up that shaft, and it shouldn't bounce around, and it should reduce the probability of bending this shaft if I snag it on something particularly in reverse maybe not so forwards so I've got to take a few measurements um, but for the record with these doubler plates here this is 56 millimeters so I'll probably measure 57 across that that's more or less the only real measurement I need aside from the diameter of this tube and the distance from when they're parked so what we'll do, we'll plonk this down here, and we'll put that all the way up. So this is pretty much where I normally have it sitting. So I can measure the gap in here. But the problem is there's still this amount of flex in here. And things bounce around and move. And then when I steer it, things can move sideways as well. So it's not exactly the most ideal. And then there's the movement in this as well. So I might be designing some shims to go in here along in the receiver hitch as well but let's go inside let's put our measurements into AutoCAD and an Autodesk Inventor see what we can come up with
All right, so to finish designing it, I would have put a little montage in of my um, 3D printer actually printing the device, but my 3D printer had a bit of a problem. So I was going to have to rebuild some stuff and replace the chip and all the rest. So I had a trusty mate of mine make one up for me out of PLA. Now I don't want to position this right at the bottom. It'll further decrease my angle of departure. So I'm probably going to bring it up to about here. And that gives me a bit more departure angle. So we'll probably glue and screw this in. But let's see if we can get this in position without it falling down. Alright, so that reduces the bouncing around considerably. Especially if I put it just below this weld bead and I apply a bit of glue. And even in the sideways, it should help reduce a lot of that as well. So, for a change, I got my measurements right first time round. That's actually really good. Alright, let's attach this permanently. We'll find some glue. Alright, for this one, I'm going to want to mark where it needs to be. I reckon that's about as high as is practical to put the thing. So we'll give it a bit of a mark along here. Put that on. Now let's get this up and out of the way. Alright, a bit of just standard roof and gutter silicon. We'll give this some adhesion. Mostly just to stop it rattling. Put a blob on each side and that should spread out when there's some pressure on it. Right. So we should be able to go in like so and stick on. It should hold pretty well. Now we're going to use some um, self-drilling screws here. Not that I particularly like Phillips head, I'd rather use Robertson. It's just what I happen to have at the time. Oops, and I broke it. Too far. Teach me not to set the clutch. Ah, I'm not in screw mode. That's better. Much better. Okay. Well, I'm hoping the silicon will hold that together. Oh well. I can always print another one, I guess. Now, let's put this down so I can get around the other side and put another screw in. The first screw gummed up with the aluminium. So aluminium is a bit of a unique thing to drill. All right, seems a lot, like, a lot more work than I would have expected for aluminium, but that is on fairly solidly and it'll be on better with the silicon as well but these are really only retaining areas the actual main force is in that direction so that should work next question can I remove this thing now that it's in there all right so we may have to up the top here we may need to work with this and maybe shave a little bit out just to make a bit of room or we make a model b with that a little bit extra room in there but we should be pretty right we should be able to push that into position and it'll lock into there let's move things around see how we go sideways that's a lot better all right i'm happy about that so that looks good Aside from the crack there, but that was my mistake for not setting the clutch properly. We're having my drill in the wrong setting, and drills are more complicated than they used to be. There's lots of different settings. So, anyway, mistake on camera. That makes for a good video. So I think we're about done with this. So what do you guys reckon? Shall we get some more footage of this thing in action? It's become the uh, tradition on the end of these videos. I think so. Let's find some recent clips 
we'll skip to that and we'll see you all in the next video.